On a glorious summer's day, I'd been invited to Buckingham Palace to walk with the Queen in her garden and talk about her love of nature and whatever else takes our fancy. Enormous pips. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little known fact that Her Majesty loves trees. She's planted them in the palace garden for all her children. I don't think he believes me. Prince Andrew. Throughout her remarkable reign, she's planted thousands of trees all over the world. Now she's taking her love of nature to a whole new level. It's called the Queen's Canopy, which is rather nice. Well, indeed so. The dream is to create a global network of protected forests by getting people across Britain and from all 52 countries of the Commonwealth planting trees and dedicating forests in her name. Some of them are very small at the moment. They'll, they'll grow, I think. It's a huge idea, and the Queen is personally involved in encouraging many Commonwealth leaders to sign up. And this is a certificate for you to, to prove that you're going to do this. Prince William, the Duchess of Cambridge, and Prince Harry are all involved, following her lead. I think I'm closing in on my half century of trees planted. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I reckon the Queen is up in the thousands. And film star Angelina Jolie is among the many partners joining in across the Commonwealth, getting involved with her family. You sit up at night in a tent with your kids and they say, why does the Queen of England care about planting trees in Africa? She's just this really lovely lady who really cares about the future and she wants your grandkids and her grandkids to be able to be running around enjoying nature. She thinks that really matters and I agree with her. This is the story of the Queen's unique vision her genuine love of nature and her passion for trees in all shapes and sizes. That one we won't look at, because it doesn't seem to be doing very well. Are you sure that's meant to be like that? Somebody sat on it, I think. A garden party. We begin our walk under a pair of magnificent London plane trees, planted by the Queen's great-great-grandparents, Victoria and Albert. Well, these two trees are really valuable trees, both planted by the Prince Consort and Queen Victoria, which is quite interesting because they're very valuable to us as well now. They, they do exactly the right sort of protection racket. Do you know who, who, produ who no, planted we, which? We don't know, we don't know who planted which. They're, they're both the well, they're wonderful same, trees. same date. They are London's great trees, aren't yes. they? Really? And sometimes we get crow's nests up here. We had to get people to remove them. Yes. Because it's not, it's not nice to have them outside your window. I think they're the most magical trees, really, just because of the way the branches are so noble and broad, and one really wants to climb them. Even Her Majesty has clambered up a few trees in her time. Yes, I've never thought of climbing a plane tree. <laughs> I, like, I mean, fir trees you can climb, but these you can't Oh, get I think to. once you get up there, you see, you'd be, you'd, yeah. that'd be lovely. It's amazing watching the, uh, the, the people who clear the branches. The arboriculturalists, yes. or whatever they call them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Spread out on, on, ro on rock, on yeah. ropes, and go right up to the top. Yes. Makes one feel quite ill. The Queen's love of trees goes back to her early childhood. But the tradition of planting trees at Buckingham Palace goes back even further. Now then, that a mulberry. In the early 1600s, King James I planted mulberry trees here as food for silkworms. But there was a problem. They chose the wrong variety, and so the silkworms didn't produce anything, which was a great disappointment for him, I believe. <sighs> I, so I think he thought it was going to be rather good. Yeah. But uh, turned out the wrong one. 
Undeterred, the Queen, like her great-great-grandmother Victoria, is continuing the tradition of planting family trees in the garden. There's an oak for her son, Prince Charles, her daughter, Princess Anne, and two for her youngest sons, Princes Andrew and Edward. Now, where are these children's trees? Then they do have plaques on them. Shall I go and look? Yes, do. <laughs> I don't think he believes me. Prince Andrew. No. Done quite well. And there's another one there with a plug. In Andrew, 1969. That one? I think so, yes. And you, you, said, no, that, can't say, yeah. you said that was Andrew. Can't both be. Oh, that's Andrew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, dear. Edward. That's about right for age-wise, I should think. <laughs> That's Edward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Andrew's older than Edward, so yes, it right looks, so. looks right. They're looking, oh, indeed, rather spectacularly so, unexpectedly so. He's done quite well, but... He's done extremely well. The Queen is now taking the idea of planting trees for future generations to a whole new level with her project to create a global network of protected forests. Nowadays, Her Majesty doesn't travel abroad, so she's sending her grandson, the Duke of Cambridge and his family, 5,000 miles across the world to receive one of the first dedications to the Queen's Commonwealth canopy. And it's a big one. Over 15 million acres of the Great Bear rainforests off the west coast of Canada, with more trees than all of Britain's forests put together. In the small rainforest town of Bella Bella, where William and Catherine are due to arrive, the weather forecast is not looking optimistic. You can really tell with the direction of the wind, the weather that's coming. So what's your prediction for tomorrow? It's going to rain. It's going to rain. But you know what, in one way, I hope it pours, because you know what, they want a real deal experience in a Great Barrier Rainforest. It pours. Bella Bella Airport, where the Royal Plane is due to touch down, in spite of the weather. Out here, they call this Bella Bella Sunshine. The Queen's influence still reaches the far corners of the world, and even in her 90s, she's looking to the future of the Commonwealth. The Queen's canopy project is about the people of the forest as much as the trees themselves, and William and Catherine have come here to meet them. People like Heltsuk chief Harvey Humchit, also known as Eagle Nose Great River. Being part of the Queen's canopy is important for the Heltsuk people. Our ancestors are still here. They're part of our forests. You go into the forests and you feel the, the power and strength of the trees, and, and we know that they've been part of that all along. Her Majesty has asked me to convey her sincere thanks to the government of British Columbia and the federal government of Canada. The Commonwealth has, at its heart, always been about the values that bind its people. 
the establishment of the canopy is a loud and unambiguous statement that the citizens of all Commonwealth countries believe that nature is fundamental to the health of our societies. When we protect our rivers, oceans, atmospheres, or like today, our forests, we are telling our children that their future prosperity cannot be disconnected from the health of the natural world. Her Majesty is immensely grateful to you and the people of Canada for the leadership you have shown in making this contribution. I have no doubt that other Commonwealth nations will be inspired by what you have achieved here. That's got a, a plaque, that's a big chestnut with a plaque. That must be planted by somebody. That's planted by Prince Albert, I think. Really? Yes. Like Harvey in the rainforest, the Queen can also trace her ancestry through the trees at Buckingham Palace. So in that case, it's a hundred and... Something. Something years yes, old. Yes, it is, yes. Magnificent tree. And the conkers just begin to come. Yes, the dogs hate them. Well, I hate well, well, they're, they're very prickly. Really? Yes. Oh yes, but but don't they like the nice shiny chestnut? Not, not really. But don't they? No. Not hiding they're handsome thing. Yeah, they are, I suppose. Yes. But do you see how prickly they are? Hmm. Yeah, not really yet. Hmm. Conkers. Wasn't it recently that somebody tried to stop children playing conkers? On the grounds of safety. health and safety. No, really. Yes. You would think that people would stop <laughs> people breathing. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be quite a harmless sort of battle thing, isn't it? <laughs> On a balmy afternoon in June, the Queen is showing me around her private gardens at Buckingham Palace. But even here, we can't entirely escape the outside world. Why do we always go round and round when you want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like President Trump, President <laughs> Obama. Oh, look at this lovely plan. One of the things that entertains me about planes are these big bowls that grow on the side. These. Yes. So they, they become characters, don't they? They do, yes. This it is... looks as if it's got a face on it, doesn't it? Yeah, it gives <laughs> such personalities. A lot of planes have this, yeah. these great growths on them. And, I, and they also, it's the way the branches grow horizontally. Yes, it's Instead of just come curving upwards, which makes you want to sit on them and swing your feet. If you're a monkey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't suppose my aunt would have realised that this would grow to such a huge height. Yeah, indeed so. It was painted by your aunt. It was planted by my aunt, yes. In the beginning of the first war. Really? Hmm. I, I think we won't look at that. That, that one we won't look at. Because it doesn't seem to be doing very well. <laughs> Are you sure that's meant to be like that? <laughs> Somebody sat on it, I think. <laughs> A garden party. Oh. We have just got bark all over the palace floor, so we better just clear that up. The Queen is hosting a palace reception to update representatives of the Commonwealth on QCC progress so far and to thank those countries who have signed up. The original idea for the Canopy project came from the veteran Labour MP Frank Field. I tried to get governments to do something to link the rainforests together in the Commonwealth and nobody was interested <laughs> at all. Tony Blair, great enthusiasm, but nothing happened. Gordon Brown, no response at all. 
David Cameron's coalition government to hopeless. The Queen jumped at it. I mean, it's extraordinary. I think she saw it as a way of a new politics for the Commonwealth. Instead of a lot of old people telling the Commonwealth what to do, particularly from the West, here was a strategy which people could opt into if they wanted to. It's a real step forward for the Commonwealth, but it's also a step forward for the world. Whether you believe there's global warming or not, and what its causes are or not, that I don't think anybody in this, either side of this debate does not believe protecting the rainforest is important. She is determined that we're all going to have a Queen's rainforest canopy in place for eternity. Your Majesty, may I now invite you to present certificates to those countries that have dedicated projects to the Queen's Commonwealth canopy. The reception is designed to encourage those countries not yet involved to sign up. Those who have get a handshake and a scroll from the Queen. The High Commissioner for Antigua and Barbuda. The High Commissioner for Australia. The High Commissioner for Belize. <laughs> the High Commissioner for Brunei Darussalam. The forests were dedicated. It's in the western end of Jamaica, in Hanover. And in coffee. Coffee. Oh, the coffee. Coffee. <laughs> It was a great thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nebia, um, High Commissioner, and Dr. Rudy Van Vera. Mm -hmm. yeah. We aim to plant more and more trees through recycled water and using solar energy to drive that everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got enough solar energy anyway. Yes, that's the one thing we have. <laughs> Trees are vital for our happiness and for our sanity. And I, in an almost sort of Teutonic way, rejoice when I get into a, a glade or a bosky nook of one kind or another. How often do you do that? Regularly. I won't say that in a Teutonic way I, I disrobe in order to commune with the, with the forest, but I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's an important part of, of our mental well-being. Did. Blackbird. Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. isn't it? Oh, marvellous. Yeah. Well, all gardens should have one. Well, I think we've got several. And all gardens should have roses, really. They're very, very prolific this year. I imagine you must be given quite a lot of roses. Yeah, I think we get a lot of gifts, especially people who've just, you know, invented a new a new type. Of oh, roses. really? Yes which is rather fun. And then other people say, would, would you like this for your... My birthday last year was very useful, and we had a lot of... Very productive of roses. Well, very productive of lots of plants <laughs> and things. You know, I've been quite difficult to give presents to, so... I believe that's so. <laughs> I've said, oh, well, let's give her a plant. Or yes. A tree or something, which is very nice to have. The royal family has been planting trees around the world for generations. It's a sort of royal, I was here, and a symbol of new life, growth, and stability. There's something life-affirming about it. One, two, three shovels, and people clap. Prince Harry is already an expert at royal tree planting. Oh, so we're going to now plant a tree. This tree. Not a tree. Yes. He 
he's officially representing the Queen on a two-week tour of seven islands in the Caribbean. He'll be meeting as many Commonwealth citizens as possible and opening five very different canopy projects on Her Majesty's behalf. Caribbean forests are disappearing fast, often destroyed by human development. It's more important than ever to secure their future, and these islands are now on board. I feel so incredibly lucky to be visiting St. Kitts and Nevis on behalf of the Queen. Her Majesty sends her best, best wishes to you all and is sorry not to be able to be here personally. I'm also really pleased to have the opportunity to thank the people of St. Kitts and Nevis for committing the Central Forest Reserve to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. The forests we see behind us are truly amazing. Thank you so much for contributing them to this project in the year of the Queen's 90th birthday. And wow, what a present. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> On the neighboring island of St. Lucia, the islanders have dedicated the capital's waterworks reserve five and a half square miles of forest. It's an area smaller than Windsor Great Park, but every piece of protected forest helps. They're imaginative with their trees here and use them for just about everything. This is, for example, a local trick. The trees basically get chipped. What people do, they add uh, cinnamon, spices, honey, and some people improve it with a little bit. It's very good, right? Have I just drunk a tree? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's amazing. We're all here today to mark St. Lucia's commitment to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. The QCC initiative provides an opportunity to unite us all, develop new approaches and reduce our impact on the environment. It is up to us to change our behavior. So we're the generation who are gonna to have to fix it. And some, you know, the, the platform of the Commonwealth is a perfect place to start because you guys can all talk amongst, well, we can all talk amongst each other, share, you know, the, sort of the older generation's wisdom with some new spin on it from the, from the youth. As a prince, you have, you're born at birth with a natural platform to be able to try and make a difference, yeah? Which a lot of people have to spend years and years and years getting to that point. So from that, that perspective, I'm very lucky to have a platform to be able to try and make change in the causes that mean a lot to me, but also to you guys. And I, I'm still in your generation, by the way. <laughs> but at the same time, as I said, being born with a lot of privilege comes a lot of, with, with a lot of responsibility. But I like to think that I'm, you know, I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life earning the respect for that privilege and trying to make a difference for the rest of my life. I'd like to thank you on behalf of all of us for that initiative. Thank you very much. It's what, it's what our family do. We travel the world planting trees. <laughs> serious, serious. I'm, I think I'm closing in on my half century of trees planted. Okay, okay. But I reckon the Queen is up in the thousands. <laughs> I imagine that you must know how many trees there are in the garden. Well, I, I think that probably about 1,400 altogether. That's quite a lot. Which is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. And of which the planes and the oaks are very conspicuous indeed. Yes. I suppose we've planted quite a lot. Yes. Yes. It goes up and up. But it, yes. But then when somebody dies or gets struck by lightning or something, <laughs> so you have to go on doing it. <laughs> You know, it's, well, I'm sure, as you say, people will present you them with all the time, and you'll have to find space. Do you like climbing roses? Oh, I uh, do indeed. They're on the climber. Which colour would you like? I think blood red. Dark red. It's not it's quite your... blood, but it, that red is the powerful red, isn't it? it is, on the it? other hand, that blush pink is also. Well, I think the, the variegated ones are very pretty. You know, have different, different yes. colours. Yes. They? Yes. The Queen's project to create a global network of forests is gathering pace. I mean, there are all kinds of different different places that they're growing in and, and all sorts of different types of forest or 
but each will be a place, a sanctuary for the whole yeah. range of the of the indigenous fauna. Yes. So. So, the, so if all countries continue to plant, it might change the climate again. Well, it might indeed. More than 40 countries of the Commonwealth have signed up. But there's still work to be done. In the audience room at Buckingham Palace, the Queen is waiting for the president of Fiji. Fiji and you may, you know, go down. Yes. Yes. The president of the Republic of Fiji, and Mrs. Sirote Kinrote, Your Majesty. Very nice to see you. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. And then I have to send my wife. Very nice to see you. So, you on, on a visit yet? Uh, um, on well, a very brief yeah, visit. A, a, a brief visit. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. President George Conrote has suggested an area of Fiji's tropical rainforest as a potential contribution to the Queen's canopy. Now, first of all, I'm, I'm going to give you the, the um, you know, the Queen's Commonwealth canopy, um, which I gather yes, that um, Fiji has already decided to, to join this. And this is the certificate for you to, to prove that you're going to do this. Ma'am, thank you very much. I received that with great honor and thanks and appreciation from the government. Uh, we'd be very happy to um, be part of your initiative and promote the uh, Commonwealth canopy. Yeah. And this is this is a forest, is it somewhere? In, uh, we where? have some forest back at home, not yeah. as big as yours, but uh, no. <laughs> I don't. Yes, because uh, I mean it's quite difficult to keep a forest there, isn't it? Really. Well. Oh, well when people try to chop the forest down and, uh, and build other crops. Yes, so should we uh, put it back here for the yes, moment? You don't want to keep, keep it. Thank you. Well, would you like to come and take a seat here? Yes, sir. Well, it went off very well. God, what a you know, pleasure to talk to Her Majesty. And what an honor and privilege now to be able to, uh, to sit down and talk to her for about half an hour. She's quite a woman. The Queen is an expert at exercising so-called soft power, whether it's welcoming world leaders in London or dispatching her family on diplomatic missions abroad. The next canopy dedication on Prince Harry's Caribbean tour is from St Vincent and the Grenadines, 200 acres of tropical forest that make up the Vermont Nature Trail. Working on the canopy project are two young foresters, Jodelia and Valicia. What we like about this area is that there are different species. As you can see around us, there are different species of trees and on um, the growths below. Are you best friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We work along with every, everything that we do in mm. work wise, we work along with one another. Yeah, we another. started the same. The same, same day, time. same year, everything. And what do you do in your daily job? In our daily job, we normally we supervise. Patrol, supervise workers, field crews, mm -hmm. and sometimes we patrol the area, forest boundary yes. area and gov and crown lands mm -hmm. to prevent to make sure that there is no, no illegal, illegal hunting or illegal mm -hmm. agricultural practices yes. or anything within the area, and also to, um, maintenance and boundary marking and everything. And do you love this forest? Yes, it's awesome. It is breathtaking. It's not every day you can actually walk out your door and just step into something yeah. like this. Some and persons... It's cool, to, it's cool. Yes. Yeah. Very, As very we told you guys, it's like every day is a, a learning experience mm -hmm. for us. It's not the same every single yeah, day. It, it's um, also helping our physical health yes. and also mentally. <sighs> yeah, the forest. There's a lot mm -hmm. of hiking. <laughs> Game for a hike himself, Prince Harry has decided to join Jodelia and her colleague Samuel on the newly dedicated Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Nature Trail. I'm looking at your shoes. Please give you some proper boots. Yeah, I have my water boots. 
Do you think there's a lot of young people that care, that are starting to care about the environment and the conservation? Yes, yes. starting to. Um, over the last uh, 10 to 15 years or so, even when I started to work, there was a trust um, towards um, get, getting people to accept the, the environment wholeheartedly. Yeah. And it has borne fruit in that you would hear children reciting poems from the forest. You would hear children um, telling you not to kill this, not to kill that, you know. Yeah. So they are very keen in protecting the forest. What's so nice is in this, on this island, people, the youngsters, they care, you know. Yes. You, believe me, there's other places across the world where people, they have either take no interest in it, they don't care, or when it comes to money, that's more important. Exactly. But as you guys work here, you know how important a place like this is. I mean, okay. the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, do you, are you guys aware of how big it is? Um, 52 countries. Yeah, hopefully right. the whole Commonwealth. You know, there's so far, I think 20 countries have stepped up uh, and have, have offered or given or said that they're going to plant forests or given away huge parts of forest to, as part of the Common, Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. And, you know, as, as, a, as a Commonwealth family, that's fantastic because as soon as two or three countries or islands do it, everybody else then starts to do it as exactly. well. And they see the benefit of it and understand the importance of it in terms yeah. of sustainability. The benefit's huge. Yes, Not just for tourism, but also, you know, as, as part of conservation for the parrots, for the soil erosion, whatever it is, because if these places get cut down, you guys know this, everyone downstream is going to suffer. Yeah. Landslides, the whole thing, everything. So it's up to you guys and the next generation to have that sort of that passion to look after these places. That's true. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. That's amazing. I'm envious of your job. <laughs> Back home in London, the Queen's job as head of the Commonwealth continues. The President of Namibia and Madame Gangos, Your Majesty. This morning, Her Majesty is holding an audience with President Gob of Namibia. On the agenda is the country's contribution to the Queen's canopy. You only arrived. Was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday. Yes, yesterday. So. <laughs> And rather a different climate, I'm afraid, yeah. yeah. Different. Different. <laughs> Namibia is the most sparsely populated country in the Commonwealth. It's more than three times the size of the UK, but has just 2.5 million people. There are vast areas of desert, and it suffers from drought and deforestation. Filmmaker and campaigner Angelina Jolie has worked on conservation in Namibia since she first visited the country in 2003. Beautiful. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Now she has partnered with the Namibian government to make a unique contribution to the canopy, a plant nursery growing local saplings to replace dying trees in the desert. This is now the ideal kind of place where we would plant out the the small trees from the nursery in a little riverine like this. Look down there on the left. Those are camel thorn trees, the most well-known tree in our country. So we're going to come up to some dead trees. Now these trees were once green, but these dead trees are getting more and more every year. Example of climate change just even in the last decade. So noticeable and the expanding deserts and the, which of course I love the desert, but we don't want it expanding in such a way. That's why the nursery is so important. We must get the trees big and strong enough to survive. That's the work that has to be done here, but that's what is possible. Angelina Jolie has a close personal connection to Namibia. One of her children was born here and is a citizen of the country. 
The local San people are among the oldest tribes in Africa, and their unique local knowledge of the fauna and flora has been vital in setting up Angelina's nursery. My family's <laughs> trying their best to dig a hole. I bet they're fighting over the biggest shovel. <laughs> Says it all when you see the local tribe, the Bushmen, come in and their and their reaction to it. The trees affect the environment, the soil, the shade, the natural resources, the animals, the ecosystem, but also how it affects the local cultures. They live very dependent on every single plant and they use every single plant. And when certain trees, certain species disappear, that affects an entire culture and their way of life and, and they start to die out. <laughs> you can see with the camel thorn, you can see them, the, the growth. And these are the ones we saw from the sky. This is the one that the vultures lay their nests in. And when the vultures are coming back and they're, and they're back in the system, then you know everything's functioning. So this is, what, this is the beginning. All six of Angelina's children have joined her on this trip to plant a tree for the queen. The queen's canopy project means so much and will mean so much to so many people. So for us to come here and say to the children, this is why it's important to plant a tree. It, that's the, the biggest message I can teach my kids, and it's something that they're, they've certainly learned from Her Majesty and, what, and her message. And they ask me, why is it so important to her? You know, when you sit up at night in a tent with your kids and they say, why does the Queen of England care about planting trees in Africa? And to be able to explain that to them is a, is a really nice way of being able to explain kind of the world at large and what should matter and why. I think that's what it comes down to, is you say to the kids, you know, really, you don't know her, you can't understand all that it means to be a queen and all of that, but she's a really, you try to say, you know, she's just this really lovely lady who really cares about people around the world, and she really cares about the future, and she wants your grandkids and her grandkids to be able to be running around enjoying nature and other cultures and the importance of other cultures, and she thinks that really matters, and I agree with her. These are, I mean, wild, these are things that grow in clearings in the canopy, aren't they? And so that they, when the canopy closes over a clearing, the fox cubs disappear. But here, you've got a permanent clearing. So every year, they are lovely, aren't they? Much favored by bees. Yes. No, and I want, one wishes one had more things that, that bees like. Yes, indeed. Nowadays. And butterflies, too. Yes. Yeah. We've, we, we have bees in the garden. I mean, bee hives. Yes. Hives. Yes. So you, well, you may not have uh, uh, mulberries, but you do have honey. We have that. honey, yes. Yeah. It's rather good honey. I mean, I think they probably go miles. They go into the parks. And yes. Oh, oh, I, oh, the bees, yeah. Mm. So it's not just here. But, but I should keep it on the label. It was just yeah, we do. <laughs> Actually, the, not the trees with which you will be presented are going to change as our climate changes, and that uh, there will be all kinds of different trees growing here in another 50 years, maybe. Might easily be, yes. I won't be here, though. <laughs> I was going to say, a sundial neatly planted in the shade. Isn't it good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Had we thought of that? that it was planted in the shade. <laughs> it wasn't in the shade originally, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> maybe we could move it. Well, it depends whether you want to know the time or not. 
The passage of time is evident in ancient forests like Epping, east of London, a one-time royal hunting ground where some of the trees date back to Henry VIII, who used to ride and hunt here. It's a fitting contribution from the UK to the Queen's canopy. The really exceptional thing about Epping Forest are the number of ancient trees. We have about 55,000, that's ancient oak, hornbeam and beech. Uh, with beech and oak perhaps being our most famous trees, that we've got some huge beech which we think are about 1,000 years old. Jeremy Dagley has been walking the forest as head of conservation for over 22 years. Epping Forest is the most rich terrestrial habitat in Europe, which I think for the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy makes it a very special place because it is so rich in biodiversity. It's that mosaic from heathland, grassland, lakes and ponds, big open grown oaks. Epping became the people's forest under Queen Victoria when she dedicated it for their use and enjoyment. Now the forest, which is managed by the City of London, is part of the Queen's Canopy and vital work on these ancient trees is being done in her name. The last time that these trees were serviced was when? Well, I think that these were done for a little bit. 200 years ago. And, and once again, because of the QCC, you guys have now been dropping. Where, so where are you? Where are you? Sorry, fine. It's it's fine. Yeah. Travel the world. It's a good thing. In addition to the international canopy, the Queen's Canopy Project also aims to encourage all of us here in Britain to preserve our own forests and plant trees for the generations to come. Winter, and the Queen has come home to Windsor. Behind the castle walls, Her Majesty is quietly getting back to her daily tasks. It's Christmas, and as they do every year, the Queen and Prince Philip are handing out presents to their loyal working staff. By a tree. Mr. Michael Field, Head of Display and Framing Pictures. Thank you very much. The frame. The frame. Mr. Andrew Whiteman, the Duke of Edinburgh's ballet. Send me your one coming to send me. I will be your last thing, yes. Yeah. Um, go on the 21st till 28th. So. Mr. Gary Jones, Fender Smith, Windsor Castle. How long have you been doing this? 32 years. I was only a boy <laughs> when I started. <laughs> Mr. Neil Turner, Senior Castle Attendant. Yes, too many, I think so. <laughs> too many. <laughs> I should be retiring, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you put it in here, did you? Yes, you actually. Mm. So we, we, um, Bought it. It came was delivered from the Crown States. It is a Crown Estate. Yes, it's one of the Crown Estates ones. Yes, up in the Great Park. Um, they say it was about uh, eight to nine years growth. Is it? Of when they cut it down. That's an interesting fat one, isn't it? Yeah, it's really wide, isn't it? One of the bigger ones I think we've had. <laughs> Weird shape. Do you do the decoration? I decorate it. Mostly, yes. Good couple of hours up and down a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is always the, the problem, is the children love knocking those off. Yes. <laughs> I know my grandchildren do, Your Majesty. <laughs> well, my great-grandchildren do, and even the grandchildren still. So, the great thing is to make them decorate it, and yes. then they're, they're a bit more careful. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much for doing that. <laughs> Thanks yes. for lighting the fire. Thank you, thank, you. Trolley, yes. Yes. thank you, Thank you very much. Fine. Would you like to have a quick... Well, I haven't seen the, the rest of it. Trees have been a part of the Queen's life all her life. Now she wants to make sure they remain a part of ours for years to come. Now here we are, 
So these are the Indian chestnuts, which don't grow as big as, as the British chestnuts. Yeah. So they've got a certain... And slightly different leaves. Yes. But they, they create a canopy, which I suppose is what all this is about. And all the countries of the Commonwealth... I think nearly all now have agreed. To allocate parts of their native forests yeah. for conservation. And, and it, it's called the Queen's Canopy, which is rather nice. Well, indeed so. And they've, they've, um, I mean, there are all kinds of different, different places that they're growing in and, and all sorts of different types of forest or... But each will be a place, a sanctuary for the whole yeah. range of the, of the indigenous fauna. Yes. I, and, and the, you know, it does, it does help the climate and it does help, the, the, as you say, the flora and fauna. And the health, the health of the country, not only the animals, but actually the people who live in it. Yes, indeed. Yes. It's an, a lung, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Some of them are very, very small at the moment. But they'll, they'll grow, I think. Well, that would be marvellous. A wonderful legacy. <laughs> to date, more than 40 countries have signed up to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. The Queen's Canopy now reaches the far corners of the planet and covers vast areas of forest to be protected for the people of the Commonwealth in her name forever.